And welcome again to our eighth grade family night. Thank you so much for giving some of your Tuesday evening to us. Um, I'd like to begin kind of at the end. Um, we're gonna show you a video clip um, that are from our seniors graduation last year. All of our seniors end their career at Casco Bay High School by doing a final word speech, um, a speech that kind of gives us a sense of who they are and what they're about right on the verge of graduation. And so during the graduation ceremony itself, we ask each student to pick a sentence that best epitomizes who they are and what they're about from their final word remarks. And this past year, because we had a virtual or kind of a hybrid graduation, um, we had a student put all that together into one video and we'll give you a sense of that opening now. I realized that growth and empathy and gratitude aren't just parts of my personality. They're parts of my heart, my soul. Thank you, Casco Bay, for being the best place for me and teaching me how to become a better person. Moving forward, I want to bring this love and peace into the world now. I love all the friends I made here in Casco Bay, but my home is in the West and the Four Corners are calling to me, and I can't ignore that pull. Throughout high school, I've learned that in order to succeed, you must accept failure. I did something, right? Say I have become an independent African-American Muslim woman, the image I aspire to be. Faith and folly, that's all you need in life. People change, and I can't let that stop me from enjoying my life. I have finally realized that despite my anxiety surrounding the idea of completeness, I have accepted myself for who I am. Casco Bay High School is not rigid and stagnant like the check boxes and imaginary schools I created. It is moldable, movable, transformable, and so am I. I'm not the same person I was freshman year, but maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it means I can be even better. I think what makes Casco Casco is the teachers. Instead of waiting for Prince Charming to save me from a dragon, I decided to slay it myself. You are your worst enemy. It's negative thoughts that are holding you back. Nothing else. Regardless of where we are in the world, we will all grow upward toward the same sun together in solidarity. Do away with your bias and stay humble. For once you do that, you see people for who they really are. Performance became a part of me that I didn't know was there before the beginnings of high school. And it is an idea that I know I will explore for the rest of my time on this earth. Thank you for letting me be myself these past four years, in all the forms I've taken. I'm a free bird riding an endless wave. I understood that just like my dad, I was a giver and a servant to life and art. That was a problem solver and a lover like my mom, and I always have people to help me through it. This class of 2020 is stronger than any other class with the most willpower I've ever seen. As time changes for all of us in the future, just know that my love for you guys will never falter. Throughout my high school career, I've learned more about myself than I could ever imagine. It's made me into a better person, a person I can be proud of. Casco Bay High School is such a one of a kind place, especially to know that everyone who's gone there will make a change in this world. My appreciation for this school is still indescribable. You deserve to be loved, not only by others, but also to be loved by yourself. Casco has helped me become someone that is not afraid to use her voice to promote justice. I am not afraid when I am preaching for climate justice or teaching a panel about LGBTQ rights because I have given it my complete devotion. We have the power, just as strong as our humanity, to overcome any words or experiences that are meant to cut us down. The hardest part for me will be coming to terms that I will never see the faces I usually see whenever I walk through those doors. Always accept help from whoever gives it to you. Independence lives through me and within me. Peace and shalom. In the end, Casco didn't save me, but it did something so much better. It showed me how to save myself. One thing. Thank you. So you get a little glimpse of where your eighth graders may be heading in a couple years. Um, again, that's clips from our final word speeches that um, all seniors give as kind of a culmination of their Casco Bay experience. So we're going to go to a slideshow now and um, give you a little back up to the beginning and give you a sense of what you can expect as your as your child um, begins to enter ninth grade. 
Next slide, please, Michael. Get smart to do good, that's our motto. Uh, we believe very much that every student has the potential to get smart, to be intelligent, and to use that intelligence for good in the world to make our planet better. Next slide. So who are we? We're just under 400 students, about 100 per grade level. Uh, we have fabulous, fabulous faculty who are all committed to rigor, relevance, and relationships in our, in our daily work. And we value each of those R's equally. We want to have students experience work that is as relevant as is rigorous, as rigorous as is relevant, and um, connected to a community that deeply cares and knows about them. Expeditionary Learning, of which we are a part, um, is a network that, that defines student achievement in three ways. Uh, mastery of student knowledge, high quality work, having students do work they never thought they possibly could through lots of peer feedback and teacher feedback and through the motivation of having a high stakes audience um, to do work that is truly excellent and expands their sense of what's possible. And we emphasize character. We think it's as important to create awesome scholars as, as awesome humans as awesome scholars. Next slide, please. Portland is fortunate enough to have three great high schools and really four when you consider Portland Arts and Technology High School. And there's some things that are the same about all of us. We all have the same requirements for graduation and the opportunity to earn recognition like a, a seal of biliteracy and a STEM endorsement. Chromebooks are for, offered for every student. All of our schools offer the opportunity for honors and AP work. Um, sports, arts, and clubs are various as, and numerous as our students. There's the possibility to take some courses um, at the different, uh, at each of the high schools if they don't, aren't offered at your home high school. Uh, we all reflect Portland's wonderful diversity and are committed to the, the principles of the Portland Promise, including equity and caring and knowing about each student. And there are three, really four great choices. Next slide. But tonight we will focus on a bit of the pieces that are distinct about us. Um, the first thing, of course, the next slide is the people who work here. And we are fortunate to have some of the finest teachers on planet earth. Um, about 20% have been recognized nationally for their excellence in their fields. Another piece that makes us distinct, of course, is our place. So we're gonna show you a short video that gives you a tour, since you can't be in our building tonight, but gives you a brief sense of what our space is like and campus is like at Casco Bay High School. And thanks to Henry of TV3 for putting this together. He'll be doing virtual tours of all the high schools. And thanks to Mr. Hale, who is doing the masterful AV job tonight. And thanks again to our facilitators. Hi, my name's Alice. Oh, that's, I think, a different video. Not so masterful, but here we go. Hold on just a moment. That was a nice little preview of Alice. So you'll hear Alice later. Welcome to Casco Bay High School. We were founded in 2005, and last year we graduated our 12th class. We are located here on 196 Allen Avenue on a spacious 10-acre campus that includes a playing fields, lots of wooded trails, a rope course, and an outdoor stage, and a slew of outdoors classrooms, several of 2020's greatest assets, the fire pits. We are happy to share our building with PATS, the Portland Arts and Technology School. We are located on the most of the second and third floors of what is called Building A. Sharing building with PATS is a wonderful bonus for our facilities. Not only can our students take PATS courses like other Portland public school students, but with no commute, commute, plus we often share facilities. 
We rehearse for our musical in the dance studio, and we build our cardboard boats in the carpet carpentry shop. The great space is the heart of our school. It's where kids gather with friends before school and at lunch. It's where student groups prep for presentations and classes circle to express their gratitude at the end of an expedition. Once a week, it's also where the whole community of 400 plus students and faculty gather for weekly school meeting. School meeting time is, is a time to showcase student voice and academic excellence as well as share news and build community. From December to June, for instance, each school meeting concludes with the moving on up ritual. Every time a senior is accepted to college, the entire community celebrates as a senior climbs up the ladder and moves on up. Our classrooms may look like other classrooms, chairs, tables, whiteboards. We have a maker space for engineering and a computer lab for coding. But what happens in these rooms can be quite extraordinary. We are not the kind of place where students sit in rows and look at textbooks. Most of the time, our students are solving problems together, real problems, from climate change to racial justice, often through long-term interdisciplinary projects, learning expeditions that may involve multiple classrooms with teams of teachers in support. Our favorite shape is a circle, so we can all see and hear one another, like we do every day in crew. It's like family at school. Crews are much smaller than other classes, 12 to 14 students who are together for four years, guided by a faculty advisor. But our crews don't just meet in the classroom. They gather on mountaintops and in line for ice cream at Libs. They kayak and karaoke together because at CBHS, the classroom is just the first stop to connecting and for learning. As much as possible with our learning expeditions, we strive to get you off our lovely campus and out into the world, doing field work, gathering data, learning from experts, sharing voice, and carrying the wisdom. At Casco Bay High School, ultimately, your learning determines your campus. And we hope we can see you around our campus soon. Thanks very much for watching that. Our first so you guys will see the world premiere of our virtual tour. Um, we're going to head back to the presentation and talk a little bit more about what's distinct about Casco Bay High School. And the big thing is um, our learning expeditions. Um, but first, we'll talk about our size. Uh, we are intentionally small about 100 per grade. Um, we are so so that students who might be interested in a smaller learning environment than Portland or Deering would have that option so that um, the kids of Portland have the choice. Uh, we hope that by being small, um, we get to know your kid extremely well. The idea is that the better we know your student, the better we can help them become the best version of themselves. And our hope is that um, that the size is allows us to customize uh, what we do to meet your kids particular needs. We are in our 16th year now, believe it or not. Um, um, many of us have been here for the full 16 years, crazily enough, and it's, um, it's been the absolute pinnacle of my uh, working life to be a part of this community. Um, and we are a very um, intimate community and, and see that as the core of our strength. And then there's this piece about being expeditionary. And we're gonna spend a lot about talking about what expeditionary learning means at the high school level. So one way, Mr. Hale, next slide to, to determine that or define that. Oh, I'll tell you a little bit about this too. We are, we are doing this presentation tonight, um, assuming because we have to, right? That things next fall are gonna be kind of what we are used to school being like and won't be uh, behind plexiglass glass walls and wearing masks. Um, we know and are ready um, for circumstances that, that make our school hybrid, and we are doing our absolute best right now in the hybrid learning situation, but do know that we're making an assumption that school will be back to so-called something like this thing called normal um, by next September. But we did want to say a little bit about our emphasis is during hybrid learning, um, since that's what the world we've been experiencing the last nine months. And first and foremost, we focused on being well. Um, and secondly, it's about building community and connections so that we really know kids well. And third, it's still taking action to better the world. And that's the work of our expeditions. Um, we define um, our learning expeditions, which are at the core of our curriculum. Kids still take courses that may sound similar to uh, courses in other places, whether it's AP, English, or physics. But at the core of those courses often are these long-term interdisciplinary projects that we call expeditions. And it's, in short, 
real challenge with a real audience um, and real work. So we're gonna have some students talk to you a little bit about some of those expeditions. And I'm gonna ask the courageous Ben Parr um, to tell you as a ninth grader, a little bit about um, the first expedition that the um, ninth grade class of 2024 launched this September. Take it away, Ben. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. So um, this fall was my first uh, uh, trimester at Casco Bay. And we started with um, We Are Crew, which was the first expedition. Um, and it really focused on getting ready to be successful at Casco, building community, and really developing trust between our crew, um, really teaching skills, um, teaching us how to collaborate with each other. And um, we did this through lots of um, different ways. Academically, we did um, several projects in both art and English um, to explore who we are as a person and how that connects to our crew. Um, and it really focused on working as a team and learning how to just be a high schooler and how to collaborate with others. Um, and it was really important, at least to me, because it meant that we were having fun and getting something out of the experience. Awesome. Thank you so much. And give it up for uh, Ben for being our first courageous student to share uh, what they've been up to. Um, what, the, what Ben describes in part is um, something called Casco Bay Quest that we had to do in a different way. Typically we take all freshmen out for um, four days and three nights on Cow Island for that orientation experience. This year we did a couple of those days right on campus and they'll get a chance we hope to go out to Cow Island in June. Um, to tell you about the second uh, expedition the freshmen are working on currently, let's hear from Blaze. Um, hi, my name is Blaze, and I'm a freshman here at Casco Bay High School. I hope you're all having having a great day and keeping safe. Today, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you about our current expedition called We Are an Indigenous. Throughout the last trimester, we have been learning about the Wabanaki people's life and how it was affected by the European colonists. As far as my memory serves, we have watched the documentary called Dawnland, which explains how, when, and why indigenous people were removed from their homes and what is being done to rectify it. Then when Molly and Dana, a Penobscot nation ambassador, speak with us, who explain how she, how her, how she became passionate about taking on indigenous matters such as banning indigenous mascots in the schools of Maine. We also had Roger Paul, a Passamaquoddy and Maliseeds tribe member who has dedicated his life to teaching other people languages. We have done some test-dependent questions on Pakistan and Wabanaki people, and we are currently working on our final presentation called We Are Wabanaki Land. If I'm being honest, my favorite part of this expedition has to be the project because it allows me to share what I've learned in social studies about the Wabanaki people and hopefully help them to be aware about what has and is still going on regarding indigenous people. From my understanding, on the 21st of December, we will be sharing our project with fellow crew members, crew advisors, remote students, our families and other teachers in the Fort Hill Public Schools. My project is about the impact of the European colonists and the doctrine of discovery. And my goal is to explain how the European way of life was negatively affecting the land and the Wabanaki people, as well as explain how the doctrine of discovery was used to claim land from the Wabanaki people. Uh, thank you for listening. Thanks very much, Blaze. Um, I'll say a little bit more about the audiences for the freshman work. So tomorrow at our weekly school meeting, we'll be seeing a video compilation from the first expedition from the freshmen um, and excerpts from some of the poems that they've created. Uh, so the entire school community will get to enjoy that. And next week, um, Blaze and Ben and some of their peers will be presenting to our entire um, K-12 administrative team. Um, some of these new resources they've created about um, the Wabanaki that hopefully will be used um, throughout the district. So thank you, gentlemen, very much for sharing. Now we're going to see another kind of expedition um, from the senior class. 
And Oliver is going to talk about uh, an exhibit that's going on right now in our uh, hallways called Art in Action. Please recognize Oliver. Hi, I'm Oliver, <clears throat> and I am a senior. And for our first expedition of the school year, we dove into the conflict between Israel and Palestine, a conflict that has been going on since 1948. The Palestinian conflict, the Palestinian-Israel conflict, a long-running and complex issue in the world today, is still something many Americans know little about, especially the details of the conflict and the impact it has had on individuals. Over the past few decades since it began, the Israeli government has seized more and more Palestinian land, and the Palestinians have shown more and more resilience. But even so, it is important to understand that there are multiple sides to every story, which we have tried to represent in our art. We gain knowledge from activists over Zoom to very insightful books called The Lemon Tree and Returning to Haifa that took different approaches to showing the conflict and the effects on both sides and through our own research and understanding. With this, we created an exhibit using our artistic skills and thoughtfulness to provoke thinking in others. And the final slide of these pictures is going to be my piece which is somewhere in here, but these are a lot of other pieces made by my classmates that are absolutely amazing. And this is mine. And when I made my piece, the quote I chose as inspiration came from the lemon tree, which the passage is pretty much the main character, Bashir, is speaking about how he has history on the land that became part of Israel, but he has no right. But anyone who immigrated from another country and was Jewish had all the rights. It got me thinking about a mirror. We use mirrors for the main purpose of seeing ourselves to maybe brush your hair or watching how a sunburn slowly disappears off your back. For centuries, we have judged one another based on the surface of our skin and what we have done in the past. So I use clippings from newspaper articles, some from Maine, some from Palestinian news sites to create a body on my full length mirror. Then I left a heart as the only piece visible of the mirror. Because instead of judging people based on their skin color, our history, we should judge them by their heart. People can and do change. We grow as human beings every day of our lives. One can only see the growth and change in people by looking into their heart. And it's only by seeing ourselves and other people, such as a mirror, that we can begin to understand what other people are going through. Not all Israeli people want the land to themselves and not all Palestinians want to kick them out. Not everyone wants violence, but one thing they share is peace. But in the darkness of it all, we cannot see that, just what the mirror allows our eyes to see. And that's all Thanks I so much, Oliver. Yay, Oliver. Thank you so much, Oliver, Ben, and Blaze for giving us a sense of student work in action that's going on this fall. We're gonna show you one more piece to give you a little taste of uh, a more STEM-centered expedition. This is from an engineering class by senior Alice Thompson. And this is something entirely engineered by Alice. And I'm a senior and my engineering class is just finishing our 3D unit with augmented reality. This is our final project we did on a platform called CoSpaces and the assignment was to create an interactive museum. Edgar Degas was a French Impressionist artist, most famous for his pastel drawings and oil paintings depicting dancers. He was born July 19, 1834, and died September 27, 1917. Vincent van Gogh was a Dutch post-Impressionist painter who was among the most famous and influential figures in the history of Western art. He was born on March 30th, 1853, and died July 29th, 1890. One of his best known paintings is The Starry Night. Claude Monet was a French painter and the founder of French Impressionist painting. He was born on November 14, 1840, and died December 5, 1926. One of his most famous paintings is The Water Lily Pond. 
Cool, huh? Beats the dioramas I used to do. <laughs> um, that was amazing. A little, a little clip of a modern day engineering class. So I'm gonna uh, talk a little bit more um, generally now about some other pieces um, beyond expeditionary learning that are distinct about what we do. So the next slide, please. So hopefully now you have a real deep sense of what expeditions are about, but there are a couple other pieces we want that are part of that. If you just go back one slide, thank you. Um, so as a part of expeditions, we get out into the city a lot and we get out into the country and we go kayaking and we climb mountains and we go to city hall. Um, field work is fundamental to um, our, our view of learning um, as much as doing um, deep textual research and interacting with experts, um, as you've heard alluded to in the students talking about the expeditions. Twice a year, we do these things called intensives, um, which allow um, kids to go very deep for a week and do something great um, because it's all they do for a week. So for instance, we have a songwriting intensive where students um, learn about songwriting and by week's end, we have a concert all of original songs. So they go snowshoeing in the main woods or they put together a newspaper or they uh, build rockets and shoot them off. They're kind of expeditions in miniature. Crew, as you've heard a little bit about already is, is um, at the heart of what we're about. It's family, it's school. The motto of we are crew means in the journey of life, we are not passengers, we are crew responsible for getting us all to where we need to go. Um, senior expedition, we'll hear a bit, a bit more about in a little bit. Um, we do require all students to apply to college. We believe every single uh, student is college material and we wanna support them to having post-secondary options. We also support early college. Um, and as you'll see later, about 60%, 55 to 60% of our students who graduate each year um, do so with college credit, either through scoring well on an AP test or through taking an actual um, college course at SMCC, USM, or elsewhere. And each year um, we get kids out of the classroom in some kind of overnight experience. Of course, speaking in a, a non-pandemic world, um, but each year we wanna have kids um, really live uh, together um, typically in crew and experience another part of Maine or even another part of the United States in a way that will expand their sense of um, both what they can do and, and what's possible in the world. Next slide, please. A little bit on ninth grade courses. Um, so we have a core curriculum in um, ninth and 10th grade, and then there are many more options junior, senior year, but we do have uh, humanities as a core core course in grades 9, 10, 11, and 12. It's interdisciplinary English and social studies. Um, we start with geometry and probability. Um, students who want to accelerate in math often do uh, algebra work that prepares them for pre-calc sophomore year, um, but we start um, so that all students can have the geometry experience. Biology is the science. All students do a year of visual arts. They can take French, Spanish, Chinese, or English language support our special ed support. All freshmen have a crew. Those crews stay together for four years. The cohort of students stays together. They're likely to have a different teacher. Um, we talked about Casco Bay Quest, which is our um, orientation experience on Cow Island for all freshmen. Um, this year we did it on campus and then we spoke about intensives. There's also an opportunity for students who wanna exceed the standards in reading and math um, to do so in, in, in addition to um, the core curriculum. So next up. So how are we doing? Um, you have a little sense of what the program is about. We've been doing this now for 16 years. Um, what's the evidence that we've been successful? Next slide, please. So we've been very successful on traditional measures, the way that um, society typically, typically measures how a school's doing. Um, standardized test scores are typically above local and state averages. In the class of 2020, for instance, uh, we exceeded local, state, and national averages by more than um, 25 points. Um, our graduation rate has been good and, in, and getting better. Uh, it was 92% um, for four year, 97% um, for students taking five years to graduate. And our dropout rate has consistently been low and lower than state uh, average or demographic expectations, typically in the the one to three percent rate. So on typical measures, we've done quite well. What do others think? Um, we've uh, been fortunate enough through the unique work that our students have done through the excellent work, the impactful work 
um, to uh, garner a fair amount of national attention. Uh, we won a prize several years ago for advancing student-centered learning in New England. We've consistently been rated one of Maine's top 10 high schools or top 20 high schools by um, US News and World Report, by niche.com. In the national network of schools uh, that we're a part of called EL Education, we are a lead school, one of the original mentor schools. Uh, we have for three times more than any school in the country been asked to be the, the host of that conference, have the, the student keynote, our own Margarita Celestino, who is currently translating in the Portuguese room, uh, was the keynote speaker at the National Yale Conference just this October. And in 2019, we were recognized for our work in uh, trying to address um, student inequities and the opportunity gap. We were one of six students or six schools chosen nationally as a national school of opportunity and the first ever in the state of Maine. But more importantly, what do parents, students, and teachers think? And for this, we look at joy. The goal of school is to have rigor and joy. If you can get rigor and joy at the same time, you're doing it right. And um, so we want students to be pushed and challenged as hard as they can be, to grow as much as they can, and we want them to be happy while they're doing it. We want them to feel really connected to the other adults that they work with, to the other students that they work with, and even to their broader community. And we've been fortunate over time that we've had um, great support from parents and from students. And they, you know, by, by one measure of kind of recommender, uh, would they recommend our school to um, other parents or other students? You can see the statistics around who would rate us the high, 10 out of 10 or nine out of nine. Um, we've, we've been fortunate enough to have a very high recommender rate and it's a reflection of the joy that our kids experience by being a part of our community. And, it's, and it permeates and perhaps stems in part from our teachers. Um, uh, there's a stat just from the last, actually two years on a, on a district survey that 100% agree that staff at this school do whatever it takes to help students achieve. Another may, way to measure our staff satisfaction is um, eight of our 11 founding staff are still here 16 years later. One of the great challenges of startup schools around the country has been um, keeping great teachers and not having people move on. And we've been super fortunate that our, um, our core just keeps um, developing with new faculty, um, but we, we do have a, a foundational group of old faculty, or older faculty who are, are still with us. Next up, please. But in a broader sense, um, what matters to us is that our students are supported to be their true self, their best self, their authentic self. We want students to be free to fully express who they are and what they're about and to be supported as they find their voice and share their voice and become informed, active citizens. Um, next Tuesday, we'll be doing something called the Winter Solstice, which is one reflection of that, where every student has the opportunity to stand up and express their gratitude for gift given to them by the community. And the entire community will be together over a webinar this year, but typically sitting in a circle in the great space um, and have a chance to share um, their thanks to one another. And, it, and, and it's remarkable to see um, the culture of gratitude that's, that's developed over time. All of our freshmen are paired with senior buddies. And I'd love to tell you a surprise that the freshmen have done for their senior buddies. Um, but since I know there are some seniors who are listening, I can't tell you, but there's a good one coming up on Friday. Um, but it's part of our commitment to having each freshman known well and connected um, with upperclassmen. They all write, um, the freshmen write letters to their senior buddies and the seniors write letters to their freshman buddies, um, advising them how, how to make the most out of high school. The next piece that we're proud of is that our students are challenged to achieve personal best. I told you about the college credit piece before. You've heard a little bit about final word. Um, sophomore passage is an opportunity um, for kids to again answer the questions, who am I? How am I doing? What are my plans for the future? Those are the questions that we ask and crew in big and small ways for four years. And we're continually asking kids to reflect on who they are and where they want to go. Next slide, please. Um, as our kids are ready for college. 98% um, of our graduates have been accepted to colleges. Some of the most uh, 
uh, selective schools in the country, um, all of the main schools, um, pretty much anywhere where our kids want to go, we've been able to have um, success um, because we support every kid to getting to that place of achieving um, their their aspirations. A couple a couple um, rituals that reflect who we are and our value. Um, moving on up, anytime a kid is accepted into college, as you saw a little bit in that earlier video, the whole school celebrates and they climb up a ladder to the Jefferson's moving on up theme and uh, are recognized for that, that milestone of greatness. Uh, this Friday, we are gonna do the college march. Typically it looks like the photo that you see there, but the entire community um, comes out and celebrates the seniors for completing the milestone of a college application. It's gonna look a little bit different this year, but we're hoping it's gonna involve our senior bagpipers. So it should be a lot of fun. And we'll be live streaming that on our Casco Bay Insta page at 2.45 this Friday, if you wanna check it out. And lastly, um, our students do great work that matters, that impacts the world. We've been recognized as one of 20 deeper learning schools in the nation. And I'm gonna call on a couple uh, junior and a senior to tell you a little bit about um, some work going on currently um, that matters. So let's first hear from uh, Aviva, um, who happens to be one of my advisees, so I'm especially proud of her tonight, um, is gonna tell you a little bit about the public policy research project that she's involved in. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Aviva Feinberg and I'm a junior here at Casco Bay. Our expedition until February is public policy, which focuses on the laws and regulations governments enact to respond to real world problems. This expedition is one of two we'll, we will be doing. And in this first one, we have been researching and becoming experts on policies we choose. After this, we will be focusing on our white paper, which is an extensive research paper with at least six sources that addresses and works to solve an issue. And our presentation, which helps to propose um, a policy change of some kind at the main state or federal level. Finally, during the public policy symposium in February, each junior will present and defend their research, um, including their proposed public policy solution to a panel of local experts in their field from um, professors to politicians. The following, uh, um, the following expedition juniors do is in the spring where we have the climate justice expedition. In this expedition, we will be studying the climate crisis through the lens of the local story, Maine Rivers. Students will be researching, protecting, and restoring Maine rivers. Working in partnership with scientists and ed educators from the P Penobscot Indian Nation, students will be introduced to a variety of perspectives on how they care for water, land, and communities. So my public policy topic is about the Holocaust and other genocidal education in Maine and why the Maine legislature should pass an act to require education about African-American history and the history of genocide. I'm interested in this subject, one, because I'm Jewish and have personally seen the effects of not educating students about genocides, and also because I'm interested in the way that, that schools teach about history and how it can pre prevent future mass murders. Thank you. Thanks so much, Aviva. And now uh, we're gonna hear a little bit about um, senior expedition from you, sir. Hi, I'm you, sir. I'm a senior. So senior year, we do three expeditions. As you heard from Oliver, we, we just had our culmination on last Friday. Our second expedition this year is called senior expedition. When looking at other expeditions, you may have noticed that senior expedition does not have a unique name like others. And that is because this expedition is unique to each student. Each member of the senior class will identify their own focus and will then design their own form of culmination. The topics will vary and could include everything from climate change to racial justice to gender equality. Each senior will choose an issue that they feel passionately about and will combine it with a passion of theirs, such as art, music, or even public speaking. For example, last year, Sierra Pierce from the class of 2020 was really passionate about um, increasing the use of solar panels in Portland. So she culminated with the seminar, bringing main youth and experts um, together to talk about the benefits of solar power and the possible installation of the panels. Personally, I'm really passionate about art. I like to draw. And I also care about 
And I also deeply care about the damaging power of Islamophobia. So my plan is to create a children's book to educate kids about Islamophobia. I'm committed to this um, because I think this is an issue, that a big issue going on in our world today. Many people live in an irrational fear of Muslims and because they have not been educated enough. And their fear ultimately leads to into discrimination and oppression. It is important to me because I want to educate people about myself and my religion and prove that I'm not someone to be feared of or needed to be hated on. Uh, I'm excited for this expedition because I will be bringing, it will be the beginning for each one of us to find our passion and pursue what we love to do even after high school and into our lives. Thank you. Thanks you, sir. And um, as she said at the end, the way we define senior expedition most succinctly, it's the intersection between a passion and a need in the world, a personal passion and a need in the world. And that's really where we want our, all of our students to be doing their life's work. And it begins with projects like senior expedition. So we're gonna give you one more um, video to get a glimpse uh, more holistically at how our, uh, we approach learning. Um, this was a video done about us by MPBN, um, believe in 2018. From the outside, Casco Bay High School doesn't look all that different from any other school. But then you see the catapults, oh. the weather balloons, and the week-long excursions to medical labs and songwriting classes. At the core of what we do, it's about kids doing something they thought they never could possibly do that expands their sense of what's possible for themselves and their world. So we do that by challenging kids to complete these long-term interdisciplinary, what we call learning expeditions or long-term projects that involve kids doing real work for a real audience. Those long-term projects are called expeditions. They're months long, and in each one, students study a single topic, like racial justice or Portland's waterfront. In every class, from English to science, educators teach their curriculum through the lens of those issues. In almost all these expeditions, kids are developing some new product or, or uh, doing a presentation to a public audience um, or some kind of performance where they synthesize their learning and hopefully have an impact on the broader community. Let's kind of talk through the problem a little bit. You can see the effect of that learning in this science class. It's specifically for Casco Bay students who have fallen behind and need to catch up. In a lot of schools, these kids might get parked in front of a computer or get handed some worksheets. But Casco Bay takes a different approach. The students learn equations and theories about physics. Then they build catapults to test their new scientific knowledge. Three. Two, one. By the end of the week, the students even launch a weather balloon into space and track its progress. The fact that you didn't demonstrate it shouldn't be punishment. It should be an opportunity, another opportunity to learn should be novel, interesting, engaging, and memorable. Earlier this year, some of these students headed 300 miles north to Millinocket. For months, the school's juniors studied the past and future of the former mill town. By the time the students actually visited in May, they used that knowledge to create their own miniature documentaries. We're trying to kind of bridge the divide that people say that, uh, exists between Northern and Southern Maine. It's been really eye-opening to see how Northern Maine lives. And um, I think everyone's gonna come away from this with a better idea of uh, how the other half of Maine is. Teachers say this work is possible because they can plan using standards and proficiency-based education. Instead of working by themselves in English or math class, staff work together and use the standards to create large projects like this. They're practicing interview skills, they're setting up the appointments with their interview subjects, they're learning a great deal about the experience of people who are in Millinocket right now. And there's all of these different inputs. It's not just sitting and reading and identifying, it's talking to people, being moved by people, feeling like you're part of something real. Over the past half decade, Casco Bay's graduation rate has risen by more than 15 percentage points, with standardized test scores mostly above the state average. So there you get another sense of kind of holistically what we're about. And now we'll tell you a little about what it means, uh, how, do you, how you go from being in your seats there to joining us uh, next fall. So a few final slides and we'll hear from some parents and we'll get to our Q&A. So thanks so much for your patience. 
So who should be a Casco Bay High School student? Next slide, please. Trick question, you, if you want. That's the short of it. Um, anybody who is interested in the kinds of programming that you're seeing here tonight, um, we welcome you. I think you hit one more, Michael, and more text will appear. So it's a lovely photo. There we go. Keep going. Um, so anybody who's interested in a small school uh, with big opportunities for voice and choice, or if you value the rigor, relevance, and relationships you've heard about tonight. So here's how you get, um, here's what happens from here. Next slide. So we'll be um, having some information days um, at the middle schools, January 19th, 21st, and 22nd. Portland, Deering, and Casco Bay will all be um, providing similar kind of formatted information sessions at Lincoln, Moore, and King during those dates. And if you're at another middle school, um, you're welcome to give us a call and set up an informational session. Uh, we are capped in size at 97 students per grade. And so if we have more interest than that number, um, then we would have to have a lottery. Uh, the form to express your interest in Casco Bay is due by February 12th, which is the Friday before February break. Um, if we needed to have a lottery, it would happen within two weeks. Typically, 70 to 90 percent of the students who express interest in us by the deadline are offered a spot by September. That may not happen when the lottery happens, but usually there's some shuffling around after the lottery itself as well. Um, so we do have a wait list of about 40 right now for the current ninth and 10th grade um, and a very short wait list for current uh, students in the 11th and 12th grade. Each year depends, uh, varies a little bit, depending on the size of the class. And we'll have an orientation to welcome the class of 2025 on May 27th. So thanks very much for listening. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Shay Bellis to tell you a little bit about um, a parent's perspective on what it means, what a parent's role is at Casco Bay High School. So uh, as a parent at Casco Bay High School, um, what I found is that we can be as involved as uh, we'd like to be. There's a lot of opportunity, not just for fundraising and uh, carpooling, but to really get involved in, and make a difference. And so no matter what your skills are outside of um, the home at work or in the home, there's a place for everybody. And the expeditionary learning, I think, goes for us as well as the students. Thanks so much, Shay. And Shay is the leader of our parent advisory group, and we are so honored to have her support and involvement. Um, and last, we're going to hear from Jake McNally, who is both a Casco Bay teacher and a parent about why Casco Bay from his point of view. Thank you for being here. Um, I am a math teacher and computer science teacher here, and I am the parent of a current senior and a 2019 graduate. And I have the honor of answering the question, why Casco? Um, first as a teacher, I like expeditionary learning because it puts me in a coaching role. I love that, that we're gonna accomplish this together spirit that a good culmination creates. Um, and I also love the day-to-day -day of Casco. During any given block, the school is alive. Students are creating, interacting, performing, they're doing. We prepare them for the future by taking action now. And I love the excitement and sense of possibility that creates. And I love that we get to know your students well. By the time they take the stage to deliver their final word, they will be known. And they will, met, they will have made hundreds of choices that help them get a clear picture of where they're going and what they want. Um, it's probably more relevant to, for you to hear from my perspective as a parent. Um, and like many, for my children, I wanted high school to be an experience that opened all the doors. And I think I have maybe a more, um, maybe I was thinking more along the lines of the rigor than the joy. Um, and by that traditional metric, Casco prepared them both well. So uh, my son is applying to college now, and my daughter was accepted at her top choice school, and that, that worked out perfectly for her. Um, of course, but then you actually have to go to college, and that can be hard. 
You're in a tiny room with complete strangers. You look around campus and it's full of complete strangers. Um, and that's when I think my daughter's Casco experience was truly valuable. She hadn't treated high school as a stepping stone. As Ella said earlier, she gave it, like Ella did, she gave it her complete devotion. She was fully invested while she was here. And the skills she gained from collaborating on culminations, from close relationships with teachers, and most importantly, from being crew, from supporting and being supported by 13 peers for four years, those were the skills that she needed to go to college. As Emily said it, she learned how to save herself. And so for me, that's my why Casco. In a world where we can't know the jobs of the future, I'm grateful that Casco helps students live full lives now. So thank you for being here and, and thanks for considering us.